Okay, so uh, I'm just going to hand over to Kave, who's the director of River Valley Technologies, and he's going to talk to us about letting go of 350 years of legacy, painful but essential. Kave. Thank you. I'm Kave. Um, my alter ego is Uncle Kave. Uh, people can't remember my surname, so if you Google Uncle Kave, you'll find me, and I've got a blog there about different things in, in publishing. Um, just a brief history about us. Um, I'm, my background is in physics. I did a PhD in 3D imaging many years ago. Um, in '88, I started a company in London. Um, and our basic work business is, for want of a better word, typesetting. Every time I say that, I hate the word. It's as backwards, as old-fashioned as, as, as the name implies. And that's what we're trying to change. Um, we have offices in UK, uh, India, and teams in Europe. This is I just picture of our, some of our guys in India. This is the Harvest Festival in Kerala in uh, uh, last September, and they make these spend a long time making these things out of flowers, and they pose for a picture. So thanks to them who are they're the real stars in this, and I'm I'm the Steve Jobs. They do the work, and I take the credit here. I'm happy to do, Uncle Carly. Um, so some of the clients we've worked with, uh, we work with heavy, specialize in heavy math journals. So we, we've done the toughest uh, end of the, the business, if you like. And uh, we typeset academic books and journals. We're using true XML first PDF output. Now, Everyone says XML first. In our case, it truly is automated. We've got an XML file, we press a button, and a PDF comes out. That's what you want. And so about eight years ago, we thought what we're doing is completely nuts. What, if you look, there's a lot of uh, manual work involved. So we thought we'd put all the knowledge that we have about authoring, typesetting, corrections into platforms on the web and let the web do the admin and the formatting, etc. The publication process is, is authoring, there's editorial, which is submission and peer review, the production, you've got XML, PDF, EPUB, HTML, what have you, anything that might come in future, and you must be sure these are exactly equivalent. This is the problem. The authoring problem is, all of you old enough to remember, this is MacWrite, word processor, if you, it's a bit ugly, but actually it's not too different from the word processor we use now. You go to a menu, you say bold, italic, uh, what have you. And really, this was a super duper typewriter. It made your pages much easier than, than you did before. And really, even now, this, we still think of it that way. We're making pages. So the word processor, it's fine if it's the, the final document you're looking at is that page. Um, and really, all you're looking, when you submit, all you're worried about, even if you know all the XML and data and everything we've wor talked about today, you hit that little return button to make sure headings at the top of the page, right? Which, which really shouldn't, we shouldn't have to. And we got too much freedom to change the page, make it look however we want. So if you look at, if you think of it as ingredients, ingredients of a manuscript are title, annotation, sorry, affiliations, authors, abstract, everything down to acknowledgement. These are things that in your head are, you know how these are separate. These are structured in the author's head. When you write them in a page, you lose that structure. It's a, it basically, it's a black and white document, right? Um, so you can see that's a, that's a manuscript. But you know, all that structure is gone. But we still do things that way. If you go to author instructions, I mean, tedious. Uh, um, you are you are putting all this structure, if you have all these ingredients, into this thing, pages. Now, if you want to read that, that is absolutely fine because that's what it's meant. It's actually a good good tool. But as an analogy, think of fruit. Instead of a word processor, you've got a food processor. You put your fruit in the food processor, you make a smoothie, and you drink it. It's great. It works. Nothing wrong with it so far. The problem is, 
We want to get the fruit back out of that mix now. That's what they send it to us. They say, oh, you've got to tag the affiliation, you've got to the author, etc. And they pay us to do that. Thank you, but it shouldn't be. So we create the manuscript visually, but the publisher wants the XML. They want those, the fruit back. Example, reference is the best, best example. We, someone mentioned Zotero, for example, with Zotero. If you're looking at a, a manuscript, you, sorry, you, you look on the web, um, and if you're, if you're using Zotero, you'll actually find a little, little uh, icon in, in, in the URL bar. If you click that, it gets all the data, including, look, the DOI is down here. DOI, all the authors, etc. you've got it. Everything is there on your desktop. But then the author instructions say, we want your references in this format, right? That's what they want. They don't want all that data from you. Now, the reference managers like Zotero say, all right, you can press this button, and we'll give you that output. So they order ingredients in the way, in, in, in the way that the author wants. Now, the author thinks, oh, I've done all this. I've helped the publisher, at least. But actually, they're wrong. Because it comes to us, the file comes to us. Publisher says we want XML, and we want XML first. You've got to accept, give us XML, and then press the button, get the PDF. So we have to do reverse engineering. We have to go back from that lovely looking reference and go and find the, DVI, the, the DOI again, which was on the author's desktop. Yeah? We go to Crossref. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. We have to double check. We have QC. That's why we're in India. We, you need this, you know. You need cheap labor, for want of a better word, to do all this crap. Forgive me. I'm sorry, but it had to come out in the end. It's a four-letter word, but not the worst one. Um, so then we have to make the XML. But, the, but of course, we want that reference in that style again, bold italic. So we have to write another filter to create that. So what I'm saying, the whole thing is madness, right? <laughs> Someone agrees. Thank you. Um, so right now, basically, the whole thing is the author sends a manuscript to the publisher. It's all attachments, right? You write your paper in, 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 a, in a Word file. You send it as an attachment or via some sort of system to a publisher. Publisher sends a peer review who sends that attachment back to publisher. Then the author has to make some changes, goes back to the publisher, goes back to the peer review, says, OK, goes to the copy editor, copy the next change. And every time you make any changes, you've got to do QC quality control to make sure there's no errors, and uh, goes back to the publisher, goes back to the author, goes back to the publisher, something happens, something like that. But basically, it's all nuts, right? <laughs> and at the end, you get a part. That's why it takes so long. So that's what we're doing right now. Our guys, I was online with them. They're doing well. They're doing this reverse engineering, and everyone else is doing. Is there a better way? You and your badges here. Is there a better way? The better way is to have, we thought, about eight years ago, we thought, is what is the holy grail? OK, how about if we have XML right in the center of our system? And you have an author who goes and writes, and they collaborate, author one, author two. And we've heard about collaborative authoring. When they press save or submit, you have an XML file right at the start, not right at the end. Publisher gets an email, clicks on a deep link, goes and sees that XML file, but, but of course with, with a nice interface. Reviewer goes in, makes comments. You can keep the comments in here. Everything goes in a nice, rich XML file. Copy editor edits the XML file, proofreader. And at the end, publisher says, yeah, I'm happy with this. Let's publish it. Press the button, and everything comes out. Holy grail. So we started working on this, and we have, we think, we have the system, which I'll, I'm going to give you a, a live demo, which is always dangerous, but I like playing with danger. Um, what are the advantages of having this XML-centric workflow? It's very fast. It's low cost because there's no admin. You always, at all points, have a perfect structured XML. That means you can depend on that XML. Future-proof. Any new thing comes out in the future, you write a filter, you press a button, and new thing comes out. People say, a lot of people say, we are in the web world now. It's true. 
But 20 years' time, we may not be in a web world. Maybe something else. There's no good having HTML5 and saying it's perfect. We've forgotten that future-proof uh, uh, idea. Accessibility is important. If you have good XML, that means everything is accessible. I can press a button. You can press a button and get your document in a typeface called Open Dyslexic. Dyslexic people apparently have trouble with things that are letters that are, are symmetric, vertically symmetric. So this has no symmetry. It's bottom heavy. Just let them have it. You can get your PDF. Imagine you go to get your, you want your PDF. I like PDF. PDF is good. If you don't like it, fine. But let's say you, you want black and white, you want low resolution, higher resolution, you want author bio, you want alt metrics. It grabs the, the, whatever is there on that day, puts it into your PDF. And imagine that you have, say, this is PRJ, um, just, just for, for, for uh, 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 as, as an example. And you just download it. It created that PDF for you, but it's grabbed all the metrics about the author, reviews today's comments, and you click on it, and you, you can, you, we can do that now. Right? So that means your PDF is up to date. It's not a dead tree. So what we did, we built modules. We have a thing called RV Write, which is authoring. We've got Review, which is peer review system. Copy editing. Author proof checking. Author checking proofs. PDFs go back to author. Everyone hates it. Publisher hates it. Then the author has to put in somehow annotations and proof, or send, send back an email with the corrections. We have to work out exactly, are we sure that's what the author means? Then it, it's a long, here you write it online. I'm really building up, this system had better be good. Um, so it's truly automated, XML first, and PDF can be, at any time, your PDF, you can delete and make a new PDF. Now time for the demo. Okay. Okay, so we've logged into the system, and depending on who you are, if you're the author, editor, copy editor, peer reviewer, or journal editor, you see different things. This is your dashboard. It's all in the cloud. It's, it's, it's working via Wi-Fi, so you can see it's pretty fast, hopefully. Um, these are things I have in hand. I've checked these articles out, and these are articles that I can take. So I click on one of these, and immediately you can see it comes up. Um, it's a little bit cut, cutting off, actually, but that's, I tell you what, I can do this. Maybe, no. Um, I'll bring it in the middle here. So what you see here is actually XML. This is not HTML. It's reading XML on the fly. If I reload this, you'll find it very quickly. It's reloading. It's reading that XML. Right? This has been written by an author online. Um, I've checked this out. If I check it back in, it goes, check it in, and I take this file. I'll, sorry. Let's go back. I've checked back in. I'll check. So I look at this. This is a web page. It's an XML. It looks like a web page. The references are all colored. So it colors the references so you can check the tags very quickly. That, for example, year is pink. Um, let me check this out. When I check it out, the web page suddenly becomes editable. So all I've got to do is, supposing I'm at, I don't know, I'm, a, I'm checking my proofs. I click on here, and I delete something. And I put some more text. And I make this shortcut, keyboard shortcut, bold italic. Uh, and I want to add a, if you're a heavy math user, you can say A plus B equals square root of al uh, alpha. So that's your equation there. Now, if I save that, you get track changes. You can see who did what. If I roll over, it says that's been bold italic. Um, 
If I now check this back in, another operator comes in, and I'm going to log in as you can see, it's, as I say, it's pretty fast. Uh, I log in, and I pick up the same file again. I can see the same thing. I can't do anything until, say, check it out. So each operator takes it out, checks it out, and they, they have to check it in for someone else to go in. So I can now go in here, double click. There are, by the way, there are no instructions here, right? The, mo the most complicated things is double clicking, right? Uh, some more text here, and I say, oh, I might be the copy. If I'm the copy, I say, hmm, add a query here. Are you sure? And that goes into, and when I say save, that's the query, and those are my changes. Now, several people, people have made changes. Difference, um, sorry, version tracking is always difficult to, to see who did what. That's, so here what we've got, we've got paragraph by paragraph basis. I can say show everything. And in that paragraph, it gives me, that's what I've got now. That's the previous version, which is Kave. Then it goes back all the way. So you can, it's an easy way to see who did what. At any time, I can say view the two XMLs. One is... Uh, there's an XML here, and there's a thing called rich XML. In the rich XML, we hold everything, including the changes. Okay, so here you can see if I can find it something. Yeah, that's the equation I put in. Yeah? That has been uh, uh, different added. So it's, it keeps all the changes within the XML. Right, it's a nice, clean version tracking. Now, if I go to the other XML, wait till that's loaded, um, and everything is, you can see the references, for example, they are nicely tagged. That's the um, you know, volume number, page number, etc. This is loaded now, and one thing you'll notice is the math that I've put in, in tech, is already in MathML, or on the fly. So you write math, if you're a you know, heavy math user, it saves it MathML. As soon as you want to edit it, say, changes it back to tech, you change it again. So you know all the time that there's no conversion at the end. There are a lot of problems when you get to the end and convert. So those are your XMLs. What else can we do? I can go to the references. Now, it knows the... Um, We've done a lot of work on the references. If I want to edit a reference, it knows that it's structured. It creates a form for me according to the structure of the XML. I can change anything in here. I can delete something there maybe and update, and it shows me the changes. I can delete an XML. Here there are eight. eight uh, um, uh, I, can, I can delete that if I want to. Yes, delete that. And it's clever enough to know that e number seven should be deleted from here as well. So you don't have to worry about linking references. It does that for you. The piece de resistance is, is, as I say, 25 years we've done typesetting. We've got a good system for going from XML to PDF. And I keep saying it. No one believes it. So now we put in here. At any time, you can say, give me the PDF. And if we're lucky, within three seconds, you've got, it's like a magic trick, isn't it? You've got a PDF extremely high typographic quality. Those who know me know that I like typography. We actually use the tech engine, which is the best uh, paginator and line breaker. Um, we've got, um, that's the figure, it's been floated to the right place. And look, you got seven references because I deleted one reference, it's renumbered everything. We've done it basically, you know. So that's the picture, it comes right to the end. You know the XML is right. There's no problem about rechecking. There's no QC. Um, it allows you here, as soon as the author's written something, we can have instant publication with a high-quality PDF. And at any time, you can have a revision of that publication. And the PDF that comes out is live according to whatever changes I've made. Now, um, is there any more things in here. I can take, I can remove the figure, I can replace the figure, I can change the caption, obviously. If I'm the copy editor, I can say it's, right, copy editing's been done. And then if we check this out again, uh, check it out. You can see how, as I say, it's, it's pretty fast. Um, 
Now you can see it's we've got a new button, approved for publication. It knows copy of things, but basically it's gone, it's near publication. Now the journal editor has to go and say, just accept all these changes, right? So I can say now, if I click on that, it says this is added, you want to accept or reject, yeah? So accept that, reject that, and if it's a lot of changes, I can do it by paragraph, and I can say accept all changes or accept all here, and approved for publication, goes on to your, you know, whoever the host is, Highwire or Atipon or this or that. So that is what we've done. Other people are thinking the same thing. Um, that I see as the future of publishing rather than sending files back and forth. Thank you for nodding. That What a great compliment. But it is uh, um, instead of writing Word files and sending out Word files and getting back, correcting them, um, we, we just go online and write it. Now, publishers have systems, so they're not going to change, they're not going to say, Carvey, we want to give you this, you know, million pages a year, please put them on your system. But they can use modules. So, for example, one of the, one of the pain points is that proof, proof correction. Well, if you have XML, JATS, this is based on JATS at the moment, you have XML that is uh, it's been copy edited, it's ready to go to the author. Instead of creating a PDF, your system can send it to here. Author gets a link, they go in, they make their changes, answer queries, press the button. This gives an XML out. JATS comes back, and then you can carry on with what you're doing. Or you might say, I've done everything, but I just want that. I like that final formatting. When you press the button, and in three, oh, I want to see this again. In three seconds, you get your, your PDF. Um, you could just use that, or you could use the whole thing, and I can take over the world, which is the, the ultimate goal. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a tough one, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's great what you're demonstrating, I suppose, is the, is the manuability of the digital and in a very, very good way. Have you ever gone on to think about fixity, that is to say, recordness, given you can change things so easily? Yes. Both deliberately, but mm -hmm. also accidentally, you know, with bit loss and all the rest of the sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you begun to think how, with all this poo poo in a PDF, which I'm up for, you know, we, we don't want to have fixity when we need to have. But have you thought about how you might then have record in mm -hmm. Okay, I, I wasn't poo-pooing -poo PDF. I actually like PDF, but I will poo-poo PDF, to use your words, being the definitive version. The problem now is that most, right, everyone wants XML. They've got to have XML because everyone else has XML. You're not with it unless you have XML. And XML is supposed to be the definitive content. But if I tell you you've got two hard disks here and I've got 10 minutes, I've got to make a decision, do I wipe the XML or the PDF? The publisher will say wipe the XML because we haven't even looked at that. But the PDF's been proofread, right? That's the problem. The version of re what I call the format of record should be, your, uh, should be the XML. So here, the PDF is always, PDF is one output. Or you could have PDF, you might want single column, you should be able to get single column output. It's an expression. Yeah, exactly. It's, thank you. It's an expression, it's one, one format. Um, so one is to make sure, this makes sure that all formats have, are this, the content is the same, which is a problem now, in, I believe. Uh, the other thing is the versions. Well, everyone who goes in, into here has to log in. The system knows who logged in, who did what. You can mark any of those at any point. You can say, this is my definitive version, or this is the pre-peer review, and this is the post-peer review with some changes. And I can always see who changed what. So the system is there. It's a matter of policy as to who you, what, which you want to be the record. I, I actually have a question. So maybe I could have come up with this point of view. Uh, business case model, how much money because eventually you're maybe cutting off publishers, in a sense. So I just wonder the cost analysis, how much is that thing? But I think it's a great system. 
maybe it is more yourself to work, but how much money are you saving from a business model by doing this business I'm not cutting out publishers. So this is, but what I'm saying to publishers is you'll save about 80% of your costs if you use this, right? So I'll make less money on typesetting because I've got, you know, lots of bodies sitting there typesetting, but I, I can do 10 times as much. Give me 10 times as much work. You do the work yourself. The system does it for you. Um, so I think publishers, it's the, it's the publisher who decides what to publish. It just makes it faster to publish, and it gives you different, different ways of publishing. So I don't think that, that changes. But it makes it faster and cheaper and more accurate. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So I'm, I'm not going to ask you whether what you're producing is open source software, because GitHub itself I was just curious about the way in which you format both the documents, so XML, but the changes. And so, um, you know, there are lots of people who are working on, you know, authoring interfaces and review interfaces. This is, you know, uh, this is a very nice demonstration, but there's lots of people trying to solve, solve the same problem right now. Mm -hmm. um, it strikes me that um, when we're trying to think about crediting people for review and, uh, and the like, you know, what is, uh, are there any discussions between you and other we're building similar tools about interoperability mm -hmm. of the chain sets and the dips. And basically, can you talk a bit about how you kind of manage the kind of provenance of the change, I guess? Um, you're right. Other people are working on it. And, and I think the, the uh, yeah, and there's no standard as such. For example, there's no, right, what we want is XML, JATs, if you like, to have standard tags for editorial changes. And people are talking about that. And I'm talking about that to Jet. I was at JatsCon, and we are discussing that. Um, ideally, you want standard. You know, the whole point of XML is that it's standard, and you can take it from one place to another. That's why everything in here, the beauty of this system or other systems that use clean XML is that you can mix and match. If tomorrow you want to use other system, you, you must not be lo locked into one system. Uh, so, so as far as the track changes, Yes, we need a standard, and I know other people, the annotation, what have you. We, we need a standard so that, so that this can go somewhere else. Basically, the way we are tagging is putting a span element, etc. it's very easy to change this into anything else. As far as other p p people go, yes, we are talking to them, several people. I see the future of publishing as lots of these new startups adding alt metrics, if you like, if the overly the lots of people doing their bit, coming in and out, giving XML, taking XML, etc. Okay, question right up the back, yeah. where I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm going to be done. <laughs> so Arpon did not ask this, but I'll ask you, is your product open source? And I also want to know, what is the future of business cards? <laughs> well, just answer the, just yeah. answer the question. Okay. The, the future business cards were Joe put last night. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll skip that one. But the, uh, the uh, yes, I, I, I was going to answer that, but I didn't because there were other things. No, it's not open source. Uh, that's the answer. No, it's proprietary. Uh, so the source is not open, but the, the, uh, the format is open. So we like open formats. But I'm sorry, come back on the... Okay, yeah, just my response to that is, I mean, it's great, it's still great, I've got nothing against that. But if you recall the story of why Git was invented, yeah. was because the product, the version control product in which Linux kernel was being version controlled was not open source, and yeah. at some point its, uh, its creator decided to completely close it off. Yeah. And the story goes that Linux created Git in, in, over a couple of weeks, the users tested it. And that kind of brings up question occasionally, you know, Forbid GitHub goes belly up or changes its mind, or it will use technologies mm. uh, goes belly up or changes its mind. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do with all the no. stuff that's in there? Okay, it's a absolutely a good question. Firstly, we might make it open source. I, that's something I'm thinking of, and I like open source. We, have, we use open source, free open source GPL software, and we've released a lot of GPL to the community. 
That's one thing. Um, the point is, as I said, at any point, if you're a publisher, you've got your XML. If I go belly up in a week, you've got your XML and PDF, etc. So another person can take that XML and create PDF from it. Now, if there's no one else in the world who can do that, tough <laughs> shit, that's your problem, right? Because I'm the only one and I've gone belly up and the whole world's going to go down. But there are other people who do that. So that I don't want, it's not a good business model to lock people into yourself. That's, that's the thing, right? I don't want to do that. But the format is open.